Welcome back. Last time we looked at using a USB Wi-Fi adapter in monitor mode uh, alongside the PSK that we know to decrypt traffic going between the camera and the NVR. So it's a very powerful tool to allow us to work out what's going on between two devices on a WPA encrypted network. What I want to look at now though is sending something called deauthentication packets to the camera which tell it to disconnect from the Wi-Fi network. So these are unauthenticated packets. Anybody can send them. All you need to know is some details about the network. You don't need to know what the PSK is. You send those and the camera will disconnect. And then in all likelihood, it will then reconnect back to the MVR, which allows us to grab a handshake. Previously, we were power cycling the MVR and the, 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 MVR and the camera so that we got one of those handshakes. But obviously, from a real world perspective, that's not possible. So what we're going to do in this one is look at can we inject these deauthentication packets? What do they look like and does it allow, to, allow us to get a packet? So we're going to jump through to the virtual machine in a second. We've now got two USB Wi-Fi adapters. The original one, which is in monitor mode, which allows us to sniff that traffic to get that handshake and the data. The other one is going to inject deauthentication packets. So we've got two adapters. It's a much more flexible way of doing things. So the first thing we're going to do in the virtual machine is we're going to run AeroDump again so we can capture this traffic. We've got that filter, so it's channel 13, the filter, so it's the given SSID, and we're going to capture into packets called deauth. So let's get that running. Now we can see because the camera is already connected, it's not going to do a handshake. There's lots and lots of data flying back and forward. So we've got our MAC address of the AP there ending 30, and we've got the MAC address of the camera there ending 5C. Lots and lots of data going back and forward. Now the tool that we're going to use to carry out this injection again is, is part of the aircrack suite and it's specifically called air replay. So what we want to do is we want to run this command and we want dash zero. Um, so dash zero means um, carry out a deauthentication attack. There's other things it can do. I want to send 10 packets. Things don't always listen to them, they don't always get through. So sending multiple packets is a good idea. If you put a zero there, it sends them continuously which uh, can be a bad idea. Now the next thing we want to do is give it the uh, MAC address of the um, of the AP we want to attack. So that's dash A, so it's C08A, CD, BB, 69, 30. And then we want to give it the name of our Wi-Fi interface. So that's our second Wi-Fi interface, not the one that's in monitor mode, the other one. So I'll give it there. And then we're going to run it. And you can see, first off, it waits for a beacon frame just to make sure it can actually um, send those deauth packets. It is more effective, as it says, when you target an individual client. But we're looking for um, attacking all the cameras on this network. And this is just a lazy way of doing it. It will probably work. So we sent 10 of those. And if we jump back here, first off, you can see that data now is not increasing very quickly. It's slowed right down. So I think the camera probably has been deauthenticated. It's disconnected. And there we go. We got a WPA handshake. And the data starts going again. So we kicked the camera off the Wi Fi network. It then reauthenticated it. We got that WPA handshake. So we can do that this at a distance. We don't have to be in the property to do this. So it's a rem well, it's not a remote attack, it's a, lo a local attack, but you don't need physical access to the device to p power cycle it. So we've got that handshake, we've got some data. Let's look at what that looks like in Wireshark. So we'll just come out of there, we'll jump through to Wireshark, and we will open the packet capture that is the result of that. So it will be called deauth.cap. So a much shorter capture this time. And if we scroll through, Let's search for EA poll just to check we've got that handshake. Yep, so there we've got one, one, two, three, four. So we've got that handshake to get rid of that filter. And pretty pretty soon prior to that, what we should see is those deauthentication packets. Just scroll through and see if we can find them. There we go. So you can see this long string of deauthentication packets being sent. So this is what being sent to the network and it's saying, get off my network. 
disconnect from my network and reconnect and then we get that handshake come out after it. So that means we've managed to make the camera disconnect from us, disconnect, disconnect from the MVR. Question is, can we make it disconnect from the MVR and then connect to a fake access point that we create that mirrors the MVR? And that's what I'm going to try next. So we've managed to use a USB Wi-Fi adapter to inject deauthentication packets which cause the camera to disconnect from the MVR. It will then reconnect and we can grab that WPA handshake that allows us to brute force the password of the network. It also results in a temporary denial of service. The camera won't be able to stream video during that period. It has no onboard storage, so I think that, that video would be lost at that point. But that's only a temporary denial of service. What would happen though if we create a new access point that mirrors the SSID and PSK of the MVR? How does this camera know which one of those two it should connect to? And what happens if it connects to us? If it connects to the fake one, we're going to get a permanent denial of service. It's not going to send video through to the MVR anymore. It's going to send video through to us. And we could interact with the cameras as well. So let's look at doing this. We're going to jump through to our virtual machine. Now we're going to use create AP again to create an access point. We're going to set the gateway to the correct IP. So that's 192.168.147.1. I'd assumed it was .254 before, I was incorrect. Give it the name of the USB Wi-Fi adapter, the name of the interface you want to route the traffic through to, the name of the network, and then finally the PSK. So I'm just going to run that. Nearly always need to run it twice for some reason in Ubuntu 18, and we should get an access point created. Now you're seeing nothing is associating with it. That's because the camera is already associated with the MVR, so it's not going to connect to our Wi-Fi adapter unless we deauthenticate it. Now I'm not guaranteeing this is going to work. So it's this same tool we ran, ran before, AeroPlay, dash zero, the authentication 10 packets, send it to this Wi-Fi access point, and this is the adapter we're using. So let's inject. So it's sending 10 packets. We're not targeting an individual camera. And what I'm hoping is once that's done, the camera will disconnect, and then within a short period of time, we should see the camera re-establish a connection. Now, is it going to connect to our access point or is it going to connect to the MVR? Let's wait and see. Wow, and there we go. That was quick. You can see there the MAC address, C08A, ending 5C. The camera has connected to our fake version of the MVR. It's no longer connected to the real MVR. So we've, we've captured it. We've stolen it. So what can we do with this? Well, we can probably tell that into it. Now remember, we changed the root password. So we changed the root password to our own one. This wouldn't be possible on a stock system, but there you go. We've stolen that camera from the real MVR. We've triggered a denial of service condition that means the cameras are no longer recording video. You can see how simple that is. With two cheap Wi-Fi adapters, that's all we needed. We're in as root. Now the next thing we could do is we could actually probably use this to view the footage from the cameras. So I'll be back in a second and we can try that. Right, so we've worked out that we can telnet into this device. We've got network access to it. Now, when we captured the traffic and decrypted it earlier, um, we saw that it was using RTSP to communicate. So we've got this, this RTSP here and we used the follow stream within Wireshark to see that data. Now this gives us what's called, well, the RTSP endpoint there. So we've got the IP address uscast slash 12. You have to know that exactly to be able to interact with it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use VLC um, and we're going to try and stream the data off this. So if we go to open network stream, the URL there, rtsp192.168.147.2 uscast 12, hit play. Now it will go through exactly what the other device did. And there we go. It's streaming video. Now it looks like garbage there. Um, it looks like garbage because I took the lens off. You can see, however, if I wave my finger about, you're getting some changes. But let's take the lens that I've ripped off. I don't know where the screws are. I threw them in the bin, I think. Let's just kind of pop it on there and see if we can... Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There you go. We can see me. You can see the camera that's filming this. So what we've managed to do is we've managed to steal this camera off the network. We've stolen the camera off the NVR, and now we're viewing the video on it. So, you know, if you're trying to break into some place and you want to go, you know, proper leet watchdog style, you know, you can you can intercept the camera feed and start watching them. So it's pretty serious, this, and not great in terms of security. 
So anyway, I hope you learned something again. What we did there was we used one USB Wi-Fi adapter to inject the authentication packets. We knocked the camera off the MVR's network. We stole the camera on our own AP that mirrors that. And then we used RTSP to view what was going on. So gradually we're piecing together more and more realistic att attacks with this system. And it's starting to fall apart. So yeah, like and subscribe and I will be back in a few days with more along these lines. Thanks for watching. Bye.